Welcome to the Alliance for Decision Education's explainer video to accompany our K-12 learning standards. This video is geared towards educators, but is relevant for anyone who is interested in learning more about the movement to bring decision education to all students. Here at the Alliance, our work is focused on cultivating and expanding the field of decision education, which draws from research and best practices across multiple fields, including behavioral sciences, neuroscience, mathematics, and decision analysis. Decision science and analysis has, for decades, been employed by civic leaders and decision makers in the fields of finance, business, the military, and medicine. While it has traditionally been taught at the graduate school or professional levels, the Alliance aims to enrich student decision-making abilities by bringing these concepts to K-12 education. Instead of hoping students make good decisions, we want to empower them with essential skills and dispositions to do so, whether as individuals or as parts of groups. Through decision education, students can learn to make decisions proactively and rationally. By learning decision-making skills and dispositions, our hope is that students feel empowered in developmentally appropriate ways to determine what they value, what is true, and what to do. The first edition of the Decision Education Learning Standards were written by educators and researchers and provide a framework for what K-12 students should know and be able to do throughout each grade band when it comes to being effective decision makers. But the standards are not a curriculum. They indicate what students should know and be able to do, but they are not meant to convey how to teach it. These standards, like our overall framework, are organized by four learning domains, recognizing and resisting cognitive biases, valuing and applying rationality, thinking probabilistically, and structuring decisions. Although each of these domains relates differently to aspects of decision-making, our hope is that when students are making decisions or forming judgments, they are integrating skills and content from across all four. Each domain contains a unique set of learning standards that are identified by the initials related to the domain and a number. The same number is used for the standard regardless of whether you are looking at elementary, middle, or high school grade bands. Every standard includes a learning progression that breaks down how the learning evolves from elementary to middle to high school. These progressions are written to include only what is new at each grade band, but we encourage you to check out the other grade bands to identify learning objectives that may also be relevant for your students. Let's dive in now and look at the standards in each domain more closely starting with valuing and applying rationality. Have you ever seen young people, or adults for that matter, act in ways that seem irrational? Perhaps there are trials for a sport they wanna play, or a musical they're excited to audition for. Maybe there's a test in a subject they wanna do really well on. But instead of focusing their attention on preparing for the big moment, they spend time scrolling on their phones, texting with friends, or binging a new show. Or maybe they need to get an after-school job to save money for college. But instead of taking the job that pays more for less time, they take a lower paying job so they can work with their friend, which leads to them working more hours. The standards in this domain are about developing decision makers who adopt goals that align with their values, form accurate judgments, and who take actions that are consistent with these values. When we talk about helping students be more rational, this is not intended to refer to decision makers who are cold or without feelings, but rather ones who are aware of and understand their own thought processes, feelings, and behaviors, and who approach their beliefs and assumptions with curiosity and an open mind. Rationality is a well-defined and studied concept in the psychological sciences. To be rational means to have well-ordered and stable values, to try and see the world more accurately, and to behave in ways that are consistent with one's goals. The VAR standards can be applied across content areas to help students develop and demonstrate important dispositions for skillful decision-making, such as intellectual humility, active open-mindedness, and truth-seeking. They address important foundations of decision-making, such as self-awareness, self-regulation, and the agency to problem-solve and set goals. 
There are many ways that VAR can play out in the classroom. To develop a truth-seeking mindset, for example, one teacher had his high school students evaluate the credibility of online information by guiding them with specific questions such as where a source came from, if other sources were reporting similar or different information on the same topic, and who owns, funds, or hosts the content. To support conscious habit formation, another teacher taught students about habit loops and then had them identify the habits they wanted to nurture and those they wanted to change. Whether taught as standalone lessons or mapped onto existing curricular knowledge, the standards in the VAR domain are meant to support students' decision-making skills by having them learn how to manage their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Let's move now to recognizing resisting cognitive biases. Imagine your students are conducting a research project on an important topic in current events. Maybe the topic is one they've heard adults in their lives talking about, or one that their friends are posting a lot about on social media. When they turn their projects in, you notice that all of the sources they cite support what they already knew or believed about the topic. Was this the result of low effort? Or were they being influenced by confirmation bias, our brain's tendency to seek out information that supports what we think we already know? Or imagine your students have been working together on a group project, but it is not going well. Rather than stopping to consider whether their project plan needs to be scrapped and reworked, they keep chugging along because they've already invested a good deal of time and energy. Are they just being stubborn, or are they falling prey to the sunk cost fallacy, which is the tendency to continue on with something we've invested in, even if the benefits no longer outweigh the costs? Cognitive biases impact all of us, and they often lead our decisions in unintended directions. Decades of research have shown that by recognizing cognitive biases in ourselves and others, we can at least partially mitigate how they impact our decision-making. The standards in this domain are meant to support students in identifying and responding to some of the cognitive biases that impact their thinking every day. Scientists have identified over 180 cognitive biases, too many for most people to learn and manage. When choosing which biases to include in the standards, we focused on the cognitive biases with the largest negative impact on decision-making. And although we are ultimately interested in developing decision-making skills for life beyond K-12 schooling, we gave preference to including biases relevant to the types of decisions students make. The standards in this domain focus on both the general errors caused by the hardwiring of our brains, as well as specific cognitive biases. We focus on over a dozen specific biases in these standards, such as confirmation bias, hindsight bias, anchoring effect, availability heuristic, and others. There are many ways that attention to cognitive biases can be woven into classroom learning. Consider conducting demonstrations from classic research studies to help students see their cognitive biases in action. Or guide your class in building a class glossary of common cognitive biases that show up frequently in their lives. Prompt students with reflection questions during group work or projects to help them stop and notice what cognitive biases might be influencing their thinking. Or have students keep decision journals where they can begin to record where and when they are more susceptible to certain biases. There are many ways to support students in recognizing the cognitive biases that influence their thinking. And doing so helps students to have a fuller understanding of what is impacting their decision making and judgment formation. Let's turn our attention now to thinking probabilistically. Just like all of us, students are making predictions and estimates about the past, present, and future all of the time. Sometimes these are small estimations, like whether to wear a new pair of shoes to school on a day when it's predicted to rain or snow, or deciding whether to complete an assignment that's due when you know the teacher will be out. And sometimes these are larger, more impactful estimations, like the likelihood of earning a spot on a school sports team or the financial impact of attending different colleges. The standards in this domain help students understand and appreciate that usually when we make decisions, we have to do it with incomplete, imperfect, misunderstood, or misleading information. Thinking probabilistically starts with recognizing that we're usually operating with something other than 100% certainty and then identifying areas of uncertainty in our knowledge. It includes making predictions about outcomes 
and determining and quantifying confidence levels. When students become comfortable admitting what they do not know, they learn to ask more questions, seek additional data, and better evaluate choices. There are many different ways that the TP standards can come to life in the classroom. In an elementary classroom, for example, students might work in groups to weigh decision options and their possible outcomes. They can work their way through different scenarios. Things like having a lot of homework but wanting to play with friends after school, or whether they should save their allowance or use it to buy a new toy. They predict the possible risks and rewards associated with each choice to guide their decision making. A middle school teacher might adapt a similar lesson on risk and reward, but map these predictions onto the decisions made by characters in a story or historical figures from the past. Thinking probabilistically is much broader than just learning probability concepts. It's about using numeracy skills to navigate the uncertainty that exists in our knowledge about the past, present, and future. Now we've arrived at our last learning domain, structuring decisions. Think about the last time you made a big decision. What was your process for deciding? Did you have a gut feeling? Did you ask a friend for advice? Did you feel clear about what all your options were? For most adults, we make big decisions all the time without really reflecting deeply on what's guiding us. Like all of us, students are also regularly making complex decisions, either alone or with others, that will impact their learning and their lives. Decisions like what to do with their time after school, how to navigate a group project, how to handle a tricky relationship, or big decisions about what to do after high school. The standards in the structuring decisions domain guide students through the important components of a deliberate decision-making process, which can be used for complex individual and group decisions. Using a decision-making process to make these types of decisions increases students' intentionality. It helps them to recognize what they care about and to be creative about what to do about it. The skills developed in this domain can help students arrive at well-reasoned and researched decisions that incorporate what they've learned about rationality, cognitive biases, and thinking probabilistically. Each of the seven standards in this domain align with one step of a decision-making process. There are lots of ways that structuring decisions can play out in classroom learning. Some teachers might use a standalone unit to guide students through important decisions. For example, one high school teacher helped her students evaluate and propose a new cell phone policy for their school. Going through each step of a decision-making process, the students analyzed what they and other stakeholders in the school valued. They researched options, they predicted possible outcomes, and ultimately they created and proposed a new policy for their school. Other teachers might choose to map these standards onto their already existing curriculum. For example, another high school English teacher taught their students the parts of a decision-making process, then had the students immerse themselves into the life of the main character in a work of fiction. Using the parts of a decision-making process as their guide, students analyze the main character's decisions and the consequences of those decisions as if they were their own. The skills developed in this domain help students work methodically through the big decisions in their lives or that they're learning about. So to recap, the K-12 learning standards align to each of the four domains of decision education, valuing and applying rationality, recognizing and resisting cognitive biases, thinking probabilistically, and structuring decisions. Together, these domains help to support and strengthen students' decision-making skills. Every standard within a domain is accompanied by a learning progression for three grade bands, elementary, middle, and high school. This provides teachers with an overview of student learning objectives and an understanding of how decision-making skills evolve and progress across grade bands. We invite you to try these standards out in your classroom, either in standalone lessons or integrated in your curricular content. And if you'd like to share how it goes, we would love to hear from you. If you're interested in learning more about opportunities for teachers to explore and collaborate around standards aligned content, please visit us on our website at allianceforDecisionEducation.org.